Hey, greetings everyone, Cameron McCaslin here. Uh, coming back to answer the questions from my Q&A video. It's been about three weeks uh, since I put that up. I got a lot of great questions. Uh, the one bad thing is I'm not going to be able to cut the videos in. I have a little bit of grief with downloading everything. For some reason, it's not pulling the MP4 sound. So I'm going to put the uh, links to um, the couple of video responses I did down below in the bottom as merited. Uh, and you can go take a look at those people and see exactly how they ask their questions. I've got everything listed here, so I'll just read it off and try to answer it in the best way I know um, how. So anyways, uh, coming first from that, it was Wolfboy1106 who did send in a video. He sent it as a private video, so I don't know if you're going to be able to watch that one or not. Um, I sent him a message, so hopefully if he releases it, you can take a look at it. But he asked, uh, classic video like VHS, 8mm, Super 8, 16mm, or Super 16, 35mm digital video. Which look do you like the best? Um, you know, for my money, 35 millimeter is still, you know, hands down the best looking thing. Uh, I am a true believer in digital video. I think that's the way things are going. I think you can make a great movie in any format. I mean, a good story is a good story, no matter how you know you put it out there. But you know, again, for my money, 35 millimeter. I mean, just the way that you know things grew up through that, direct lighting and things like that. I mean, not to say there's definitely been some films on different formats that I've loved, um, but that's kind of where I would go. Uh, he also asked, what's your favorite Super 8 movie? Uh, not familiar with a whole lot of original, you know, Super 8 movies. The only one I can really think of off the top of my head was the Zapruder film, which is, of course, the JFK assassination, which uh, not a great movie to, you know, want to watch over and over again. But as far as, like, 8mm movies, stuff that was, like, re-edited for... Um, eight millimeter that was a little bit before my time i haven't seen a whole lot of that stuff um just because i grew up basically in the vhs era so that's how i watched a lot of things i have watched some of those films um some of the shorts i mean you know obviously there's things like chaplin and three stooges that were you know transfer very well slapstick comedy i think for stuff that didn't have audio um but i don't know that i have a favorite i really do wish somebody would put out a collection of um movies that were just kind of you know, I'm sure there's probably bootlegs out there of just kind of some of those old, uh, like, Castle Films 8 millimeters. You know, so you can kind of watch to see how people edited that stuff down. Uh, there was a DVD put out a couple of years ago called Monster Kid Home Movies that was just kids from back in the 60s, 70s who made these, like, home, you know, they were just their home movies that were monster films. And they put them all together on one disc. And it's a really great collection. So uh, if I was going to recommend anything, I'd say check that out. I think it's monsterkidhomemovies.com. You can order it from there. Um, let's see. What's your favorite shot on video horror movie? I'm probably going to go with video violence for that one. I mean, I had that's another one. Like I've seen a good chunk of those now that they've been on DVD. Um, my favorite title for any of those movies is The Crazy Fat Ethel, which is criminally insane. I think it's just a... It's just a funny title. I've got a t-shirt that um, T-shirt Joe made for me at uh, FastCustomShirts.com. I'm just plugging everybody tonight. So um, it's a good one. I mean, like, if, I definitely would take suggestions. I know um, uh, Sean C. Phillips did a video sometime back talking about some of his favorite stuff, and there was a lot of good stuff on that list. So um, let's see. What's your favorite remake? And... Um, it, kind of asking me that and saying, you know, you basically said something to the effect of you think it was hard. Uh, for me, that's not hard. The Hands down, the, the best remake ever is uh, this right here. It's John Carpenter's The Thing, which was a remake of Howard Hawks The Thing. This is the perfect example how you can make two very good movies. Both of these are great. Um, they both work in the time frame that they were made and uh, are just, uh, just great films all together. John Carpenter's The Thing... Um, it's flat out amazing. I know they're working on like a sequel, prequel kind of thing to that. Um, I'm going to hold my breath and just hope, you know, hope that something good comes out of it. The people that are doing the effects for it are the same people that um, are working on the new Robert Rodriguez Predator movie. So I have some hope that it could be that it could be good. But um, that's by far my favorite remake. And there's been some other good ones. I think the King Kong remake's really good. Um, some of, you know, there's been some terrible ones as well, and some other people asked me some questions, so I'll kind of get to that in a little bit, but I don't know, I try not to harp too much on the remake train, because I think the more you talk about it, the, you know, it almost takes on this effect of, well, I gotta see how bad it is, and then you're just putting, you know, you're lining people's pockets, and I'm not really into that, so, uh, let's see, your favorite Shriek, favorite Shriek show release, um, he says his is the hazing and bad biology, um, I pulled a couple off of my shelf. Um, 
I've got Blood Feast 2, I've got Warlock Moon, I've got Touch of Death, I've got, I guess it's Anthrop, how do you say this, Anthropop Haggis, um, I have not watched this, I got this for dirt cheap, but hands down my favorite one, my favorite one is still Zombie 2, uh, classic shark versus zombie, I've also got the Blue Underground release of this, but uh, I think Larry or Dr. Gang Green has this uh, has that version of it at the moment. This is still a killer movie. Just a lot of fun to watch. So, you know, there's that. Um, let's see. And it says, which major studio, one and only one, do you want dead? Um, I can't, you know, I don't know that you can kill a studio. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of always, for me, you know, they put out some good stuff, they put out some bad stuff, and it really isn't so much about who's doing the distribution on it, but the filmmakers that are putting it out. As far as major studios, um, can't think of anyone I want dead. I, I'm re I will say that I'm really happy that with the whole Miramax situation as it stands, looks like Disney's going to be losing out on that and giving it back up to the Weinsteins, which hopefully um, they can do something with it. I think it's only right that they have it since it was named after their parents, so I'm glad to see that going down. Um, cool, so moving on down the road... Um, let's see, I guess it's Twitter up, T W I E R up. So I have two questions about how many DVDs, VHS do you own? An estimate if you don't know, and how long have you been growing that beautiful beard of yours? Um, I have roughly about 4,000 DVDs, VHS, not a whole lot more, about maybe 100, 150, which is probably a lot more than most people are still hanging on to. Um, with the DVDs, I have had a DVD player since 1999 and I very rarely get rid of stuff. There have been a couple things over the years that were worth small fortunes that I have dumped. But for the most part I've, I've kept a lot of, um, of what I've collected over the years. So uh, I really, I didn't even know it was that until just a couple of months ago. I used DVD Aficionado to catalog and somehow like I popped onto something that kind of told me how many titles I had and it was right at 4,000 titles. Uh, and it's weird because I don't know exactly how they count all that as far as like if box sets count as multiple titles and things like that. And of course that doesn't account for just random bootlegs and various stuff that never got cataloged because of whatever reason it wasn't in there whenever I whenever I got my hands on it. So I've got quite a few. Um, again, it's from what you guys usually see behind me. There's a wall there. There's also um, a wall on the opposite side of this room. is one to my right here that's about half that size. That's just full to the brim, and I've also got stuff stacked on the floors. Uh, whenever we moved into our house, my wife pretty much said she wanted me to keep it all in the office because every apartment we had before this, it was kind of just sprawled everywhere. So I'm kind of contained to this one room right now, and if I ever get over this, I really don't know what I'm going to do. There's still a lot of stuff that I want to get, and I do have a Blu-ray player now, so I'm grabbing things as I go. But uh, I don't know. I don't buy it nearly as much as I used to in days gone past. Um, okay, cool. I'm going to cut to um, the next part on this video and start over. I don't know how many parts this thing is going to be in. Uh, there's a lot of questions here. Actually, this was a lot um, more than I expected, you know, from the start. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.